Hey guys, my tutorial, getting started with Maya part 4, I think we're up to now, and we're going to take a brief look at animating. Now, I want to keep these tutorials brief, mainly because they're there to get you started, and then I'll be doing more in-depth tutorials discussing various topics and far more um, particular subjects. Um, <laughs> looking at certain subjects a bit more in depth. Um, so when you load up Maya it's going to look pretty much like this. Um, now by default you're going to see 24, this bar will say 24, it's going to go up to 24 here and you've actually got, it's actually 48 frames long which means your sequence is 48 frames long and because working in NTSC um, it's 24 frames a second so by default it gives you a two second long sequence and we can up that um, we can say 52 72 that will give us a three second long now to see all 72 frames we can grab this square here drag that out and now we can scrub through now nothing's happening because well because we haven't told it to um, let's add a square, so we're going to go down to our polygons shelf choose create polygon cube, hold down shift then remember what we're going to hit, we're going to hit number 5 so we can see our shaded object and what we're going to do, hit W for the move tool move it back and then we're going to hit the S key and that is going to set a keyframe and you can see we've got now a little red line there which is what we want. We're going to go to the last frame, frame 72. We're going to move our object over here and hit the S key again. Now we scrub back through. We can see that we've now got a moving object. Very nice. If we hit this button here, we now get a um, timeline view. It's also our curve editor, and you can see that all these lines are straight, and then we've got our red line which is curved. Now we navigate this in the same way we'd navigate a 3D viewport, so hold down ALT and uh, middle click to pan and you can see that our red line is curving. Now that represents um, our translate X. You can see it's color coordinated red to red uh, basically that's just showing us that it's changing whereas it because it's only moving along one axis all the other axes are stationary and just the x is changing, just the x value. Um, but we're not going to look too much into this timeline because it's far too confusing. It will melt your brain. Well, maybe not melt your brain, but you know. Um, another just very basic thing I'm going to cover with animating is uh, using motion paths. So let's create a nice NURBS circle and then go into our curves shelf and create a circle grab our main circle, hold down shift and select our outer ring then we, we want to make sure we're in our animate menu set so we're going to click on this arrow up here, choose animation and we're going to go animate create, um, sorry motion paths set um, attached to motion path hit this box here and we've got a few nice options. It's going to set us a. Um, by default, you're going to be on here, but you want to be over to the start and end. And now you can see we've got a few options. But so basically, we can choose which frame it's going to start on. So let's say we want to wait 10 frames before it starts moving, and we want it to end on frame 72. We can hit apply. We close down that. If we scrub through now, we can see that at frame 10, bam, it starts moving. And then at 72, it finishes and gets all the way around. We can have a look at our motion path. Pretty simple, pretty simple stuff. If we right click on here, click on there, we've got a few options here and that basically tells us 
well this is the information we gave it where it says it's going to start at 10 and finish on 72 if I change this value to 2 then what that's going to do is finish it, is go at twice the speed now I'm not going to go too in depth into motion paths but that's the basic information, you now know how to animate which is pretty cool, pretty awesome stuff um, if you remember the modeling basics, um, here's my challenge for you. What you want to do is you want to model a fence. Um, so the way you might want to do that is create a plank of wood like that. If we go into um, our vertex mode, grab them two vertices and bring them down, you can see it's now a bit of a jagged piece of wood. Go into object mode, and we're going to edit um, I'll tell you what, we'll just do a copy and a paste and it's going to paste it in the same position so you won't notice it at first but if we go back into our move tool we can see we've now got two and we can scale it downwards a bit we can rotate it I want to make sure that that's set to 90, we want it to be perf, actually 180, there we go. You can build a fence, and then what you want to do when you build a fence, and you've also got some going the other way, what I mean by that is you've got some behind all the wood, so it looks like they're actually being held on, and then you want to have a gate that swings open. Do you guys reckon you can do that? Well, let me know how it gets on, and I'll see you guys in part five.